The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn this morning is number 336. Jesus, where'er thy people meet, there they behold thy mercy seat. Hymn 336. <laughs> Thank you. Please do take your seats. Uh, the, the beginning of that last verse, Lord, we are few, but thou art near. It, 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 it feels so true. Um, we are few in number today um, in, in the height of holiday season, but uh, but as always, God is with us, uh, and we're here uh, to give Him praise and, and worship. And it's a real joy to be able to do that. Um, there, there's, there's that word, halle. There's, there's a lot of joy in, in the meaning of, of, of that word when we, we praise God. Uh, just a few notices uh, before we continue with morning prayer. Um, a reminder to, to any leaders of organizations, if you would like a note about autumn activities included in the magazine, which will be out probably towards the end of August. Send through a few bullet points or, or a couple of paragraphs to me uh, sometime before the end, end of July, please. Uh, the church will be open during the day again from the, the, the 1st of August for anybody who wants to, to, to pop in to, to sit quietly or, or, or to pray or even for for visitors in Tandragi to come and look around. Uh, and just making you aware of that uh, and to ask if anybody's in the vicinity, uh, just be alert to, uh, alert to anything strange that may be going on. The insurers are happy for us to, 
to open the church during the day. Uh, we, we, we're taking a few things to, to mitigate against potential risks as well. But um, yeah, just please, especially those who live live close, uh, please be alert to anything a bit unusual happening in and, and around the church building. Uh, a big thank you to, to Brian uh, for leading last week in my absence. He's not, not here today, I don't think. No, he, he's not here, but uh, he did the honours last week. And, and today we've got Linda playing for us as, as well as Collins away. So thank you, Linda, uh, for standing in. Next Sunday, uh, we're still in July, um, but it's the fifth Sunday of the month, uh, and we'll have a celebration of wholeness and healing um, for our service at, at uh, 11.30. And I, I don't think it's been had here in this parish church on a Sunday morning, but uh, it'll be an opportunity to experience it for the first time. And, and, and if, you, if you enjoy that service, we'll, we'll maybe have it on a few further fifth Sundays in the month. So that's next Sunday at, at 11.30. Um, you, you maybe notice a slight change in and around, around the pulpit, uh, thanks to the big fella down there towards the back there, Matthew, for, for, for making the renovations. And there'll be one or two other um, small renovations there to, to allow us to put our, our, our new sound desk in, in that area. Uh, and, and there's a, a plea to anyone here who has um, young, young people who may like to operate the sound system, and, and we're going to have two cameras as well, so there'll, there'll be camera operators too. Um, anyone who would like to do that in the future, uh, please t to let me know. Or if you feel that you've got uh, children or grandchildren who would like to do that, uh, l let me know and mention it to them. Uh, and, and it doesn't even have to be children. Um, I know that younger folk um, enjoy doing that, um, but there might be some a bit more longer in the tooth, shall we say, who might like enjoy t doing that as well. So, so, so let me know and we'll, we'll get you trained up to, to operate the new, the new sound system. So, uh, I think that's it for now. Um, page 101 in the Green Prayer Books, page 101. And you're all very welcome, all those here in church and those joining us online as well. So, beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to... Please, please stay seated. Uh, we, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and our praise and our thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, using the confession at the top of 102. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thoughts and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And our opening canticle, which we'll say this morning, can be found on page 130. This is a, can a canticle which, um, which is a great favorite in the Church of Ireland, although it's not used in too many other places. It's the Herbs Fortitudinous at, at the top of page 130. It's a, a lovely passage from, from the book of Isaiah. And we'll say it together. We have a strong city. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates.
that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for our rock of ages is the Lord. The way of the just is uprightness, Thou that art upright dost direct the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be. Amen. And maybe you can take your seats as, we, uh, as we, we're going to say say the the psalm which you can find on page 691 page 691 <coughs> and uh, the verses appointed to be read today are verses 11 to 17 of psalm 86 starting at verse 11 there's just a great opening verse to, to what we're, we're going to say. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. We, we need to pray that regularly as individuals and as, and as a church. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Maybe let's just sit together quietly with that thought for a moment before we say the psalm. If I say the odd verses, please, would you join in with the even verses from 11 to 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me, for you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. O God, the proud rise up against me, and the ruthless hordes seek after my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favor, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now shall be forever. Amen. Just the one reading this morning, um, and Amanda's going to read for us from the book of Matthew. The reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and then continuing at verse 36 to 43 and it can be found on page 14 of the New Testament section of the Bible. The parable of the weeds among the wheat. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? 
But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Continue then at verse 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing the hymn version of the canticle Te Deum, and you can find that in, in your books at number 696. God, we praise you. God, we bless you.
And as you remain standing, please can you turn to page 112 in your prayer books, page 112, as we proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the king and grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. The collect for this Sunday. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together the fourth collect on page 114. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing again hymn number 636, May the mind of Christ the Saviour live in me day to day, hymn 636. <laughs>
just some wonderful words in that hymn, Linda, thank you for, for picking it, and maybe just using one of the, the, the prayers from one of the, the verses there. Let's, let's pray before I begin. May the love of Jesus fill us you know, and be with us as we try to work out the meaning of his words to us. And may we also have the courage to put those words into practice in our lives. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Yeah, please do sit down. Uh, so Matthew chapter 13, 13 is full of, of parables, all explaining what the kingdom of heaven is like. A parable, of course, as you know, is a way of teaching that uses stories to engage the listener's imagination and to encourage them to, to look for, for the wee extra bit that needs some working out so that the lesson is hammered home. So, so we'll try to work out that extra meaning today for us from that parable that Amanda read for us. Last week, um, Brian talked about the parable of the sower planting his seed in different types of soil. Uh, the sowing of seeds was complicated by soil conditions, encouraging us to, to consider what type of soil are we. This week's parable is similar in that it's about sowing seed too, about planting. This week, though, there are two sowers. The field owner has an enemy who introduces weeds into the field among his crop of good grain seeds. As the weeds take over the field, will the wheat be ruined in the way the thorns ruined the crop last week? Maybe a good place to start is to remind ourselves what that phrase, the kingdom of heaven, means. Matthew uses this word heaven to mean God, not some afterlife destination. The kingdom of heaven is central in Jesus' teaching. He's talking about God's kingdom, where God is very evident, where his ways are followed, where God's presence is deeply felt, where his character is embedded in people, in their hearts and actions and situations. So it's when God is at work in the world through his people that his kingdom is evident. It's, it's where God's kingship is acknowledged. And with it comes justice and, and love and obedience and order and fairness for all and peace and all those good things of God. So to the, to the parable now, um, as any gardener knows, weeds can be a bit sneaky. Um, they can closely resemble a plant that is growing nearby. So we sometimes aren't sure which we planted and which is the imposter. I know I've looked at my garden sometimes in the past and thought, did I plant that or, or, or is that a weed? Um, and, and they're sneaky. I remember once growing strawberries only for this similar looking sneaky wee weed with a similar leaf shape and size and to, to embed itself amongst the strawberries, no doubt making use of the nutrients otherwise intended for the berries. In the parable today, Jesus is talking about a weed that closely resembles wheat and it's evident only as a weed when the plants mature. So to try to remove the weed at early growth stage may mean uprooting the wrong plants. In the parable, the advice of the farmer to his laborers or to his servants, as it said, or slaves maybe in the translation, the advice to them is to do nothing. Be patient. Let the two grow side by side, and when they mature and can be differentiated, then that's the time to separate them and destroy what's not good. 
And that's one great lesson for us to take from the parable. Recognizing that good and bad seed is not always easy, certainly at outset. I, I can imagine if two babies were brought to the front here, one of them a baby Adolf Hitler, they're both here for baptism, shall we say, one of them a baby Adolf Hitler and a baby Queen Elizabeth II. We wouldn't be able to differentiate between the two of them as babies. We'd both think they would look sweet and innocent and good, wouldn't we? Differentiating between what's good and bad in the world can sometimes be hard. Sometimes they can look similar, and it's only after being patient and letting things develop that we can tell the good from the evil. So the lesson is let's not be hasty in coming to a decision in trying to fix things because something we may think is a weed may be wheat and vice versa. Reflect on your own life. Have there been things which you stamped down on early only to look back and wonder if it would have been wiser to, to let things develop before making an irreversible decision? Let's as individuals and as a church, as a community of the faithful, be careful how we make distinctions and be alert to the consequences of deciding against something too quickly. It can often be good to pay the price of ne not making a decision now, so in the long term the overall impact is better. A church being slow to change, and churches are often criticized for being slow to change with the times, but a church being slow to change, slow to react, because perhaps it doesn't want to uproot the wrong things, can be a good thing. And that's one reason why I'm so glad we're taking a bit of time to think about whether we should have screens in our church or not. This may go against what we sometimes tell our young people or what society pushes them to do. We encourage them to change the world, to stand up against what is wrong and do it quickly. Society teaches if they want things, get them now. Don't worry about waiting. Whereas the parable teaches us to have patience and have humility to postpone making a decision and to ask God to teach us His ways, as we've thought about in that psalm, to wait for His voice. So what else can we learn from the parable of the wheat and tares? Maybe you know that old word, the wheat and tares. I think one thing that's very obvious but still worth spelling out is that it is not our job after we have patiently let the weeds grow among the wheat. It's not our job to determine who the wheat is and who the weeds are, to determine what is good or bad, to make the decision about who will be gathered into the barn at harvest time and who burned. In his helpful explanation of the parable to the disciples, Jesus tells them what almost every element of the parable represents. The one who sows the, the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the citizens of God's kingdom, members of his family. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Jesus does not, however, say who the farm laborers represent. Perhaps it's the disciples, or perhaps anyone who hears this parable and its interpretation, anyone who has questioned why God allows evil to grow and thrive, or who has wanted to take matters into their own hands and root out evil. Jesus says, that the reapers will take care of this at harvest time. 
it's not the laborers nor any human beings who are authorized to pluck out the weeds from the wheat. This will never be our job. We aren't the farmer. Judgment is outside our control. It's up to God and his angels. And I know I've said this already in my short time here. Let's not be judgmental. Leave it up to God to judge. And please do take reassurance in knowing that he will judge. Last we thought from, from this parable this morning, probably we'd be wrong to think the world is simply made up of either wheat or weeds. Things aren't just good or bad. Some weeds can be good. Some weeds can be a bit complicated. Um, some things can be a bit complex. Think of the common dandelion. It's an annoying pest in our gardens, yes, but it's also a pollinator, a medicinal diuretic product, and the source of a drink with another wild food we call a weed too, burdock. I'm sure you've sampled dandelion and burdock sometime. Justice and injustice live side by side in the world. Love and hatred coexist all the time. Whenever there is good soil, all kinds of things will grow. We know weeds can live in poor growing conditions, even appearing through tarmac and concrete. They don't need encouragement. They grow by themselves. But boy, do weeds love good soil too. If we are the good soil that Brian was urging us to be when discussing last week's parable, we will have among us plenty of strong growing weeds. Even the good news of Jesus lives alongside its opposition. As the seed grows, as the good seed grows, as God's ways expand, there is opposition. The crop and the weeds are always growing simultaneously. When we are doing good, something faithful, there will be opposition to it. Our job is to tend the soil, to help nurture the environment, to make it conducive so that we and others have the opportunity to live their lives the way God wants. Let's accept that and understand God wants growth, not perfection. Amen. Our next hymn, which is also the Offertory hymn, um, picks up that thought of growing and planting and, and, and seed, uh, and it's number 378, Almighty God, whose word is cast, hymn 378.
as we turn to God in prayer. We think about good and bad in the world. We pray that the church and the world will be preserved from evil. Protect the church against anything that would damage its witness. May the clergy and people of our church, the Church of Ireland, have the wisdom to discern between good and evil. May we and all the churches of our land understand the role God has for us, leaving matters of judgment to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments of the world, asking that integrity may be a central tenet. Father, root out corruption from high places where power can be misused and rights disregarded. We pray especially for our own local and central governments that the focus will always be to bring a better life for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for ourselves and an ability to see and correct the wrong that is in ourselves and to foster what can be used for good. We pray you would protect this community from any evil that threatens its peace. May we live together in harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, look with mercy on all who find life futile, all who are bored, or whose work is unfulfilling or dull, all who are surrounded by decay and decadence, or whose family and home life is a constant struggle. We pray for any battling illness or disability, all who are wearied by caring for others. And we ask you to encourage all health service workers constantly giving of themselves for others. In a moment of silence, we have an opportunity now to bring our own prayers before the throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. To God, who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. been good to worship with you all this morning. Maybe you'd like to, to stand as we um, have our concluding blessing and then sing our closing hymn. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. So our concluding hymn is number 509, Your Kingdom Come, O God, Your Rule, O Christ, begin. Hymn 509. Mm -hmm.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.